This is the first video on state space feedback and gives a brief introduction. The first three sections in this video series then looked at the definition of state space models, the computation of the underlying behaviours and concepts of controllability and observability. And here you'll see we've given a typical state space model x dot equals ax plus bu and with an output y equals cx plus du. And if you need to revise this, please look at the first three sections. The next job then is to look at feedback design. So that is, how do we embed feedback into a state space system in order to obtain the desired behavior? And this series is going to assume that state measurements are available for use. So we're going to assume that the states x are known. So what is state feedback? State feedback means that state measurements can be used to determine the control action. And for simplicity, now we're just going to consider the regulation case, which means the target is the origin. That's somewhat simpler in terms of the algebra, and we can deal with non-zero targets in the longer term. So state space, state feedback means the following. It means that the input is given by some linear combination of the states. So u equals minus k times x, and k is your state feedback matrix. What we want to do is look at the impact of putting this control law onto our system. What's the impact of this on the behavior of our system? It's obvious that feedback changes behavior, and you'll see that that sort of topic is covered in many of the other videos on this website, so it's not discussed any further. Now, in the state feedback case, we can do some straightforward analysis. You can see if we take the state space model, x dot equals ax plus bu, we combine it with the state feedback, u equals minus kx, then it's straightforward to show that the closed loop dynamic is given by x dot equals a minus bk times x. And you'll notice I've defined this matrix phi equal to a minus bk. So the closed loop behavior is governed by the eigenvalues of the matrix phi equals a minus bk. Now controllability. It's clear that state feedback changes behavior and allows us to move the closed loop poles. So in the open loop, we had x dot equals ax plus bu and the poles are the eigenvalues of A. In the closed loop, we have x dot equals A minus BK times X, and the poles are the eigenvalues of A minus BK. So we've changed the pole positions. The closed loop is different from the open loop. Now, if you consider the discrete case, this is identical in principle to the continuous case. And so it's not going to be covered much in this particular series. Just a quick summary here. In the open loop, you have xk plus 1 equals axk plus buk, and the poles are the eigenvalues of a. In the closed loop, you have xk plus 1 equals a minus bk, xk and the poles are the eigenvalues of a minus bk. And you will see that's exactly the same insight and analysis as for the continuous time case. Some clear questions then. We know that k allows us to move the poles, so including state feedback, we can move the poles. But can we place the poles where we want them to be? Can we place them arbitrarily? And is there a systematic design method for selecting the feedback matrix K? We're going to give some examples here which show that the selection of K is non-trivial in general. And that's quite important to recognize. First then, an example. Find the impact of the state feedback. I've given a state feedback here k equals 1, 2, and you'll see you've got an A matrix and a B matrix. And we just want to know, what does this k do to the system behavior? First then, determine the eigenvalues with and without the state feedback. So the open loop, without the feedback, we do lambda i minus a equals 0, the determinant, and you find that you've got open loop modes at 2 and minus 1. When I close the loop with this state feedback, then I find the matrix A minus BK, and that's given here as 3, 6, minus 2, minus 6. And I can find that the closed loop eigenvalues are 1.37 and 
and minus 4.27. Well, it's clear that those are different. So the closed loop poles are different from the open loop poles. But if I was to ask you, is there a clear link between this change and what you chose k to be, you might be struggling and saying, well, I know it's made a difference, but I don't know why and how. Can we then find the dependence of the poles on the state feedback? So what I'm going to do now is make the <coughs> parameters of this k variables, k1 and k2, and see if we can explore how the pole positions depend on those parameters. So now, if I calculate a minus bk, you see I get this matrix here, <coughs> which is a bit more um, of a mess. And then when I find the closed loop poles using the determinant of lambda i minus a minus bk, I get this horrible expression here. And this is only two by two. And already this expression is beginning to get quite messy. I can simplify it slightly to this form here. But what's the key point? While in principle, I can choose these parameters k1, k2, which appear in these four places to get the pole positions that I would like. This is beginning to get quite cumbersome. What happens then if we go to a three by three examples? Here then, k has got three parameters, k1, k2, and k3. So using the same sort of methodology, I can find a minus bk. Here it is. And you notice these k parameters appear in every term in this element, in this matrix. I can now find the closed loop poles by solving the determinant of lambda i minus a minus bk. And I'll get an expression like this. But the key thing is this p2 is going to depend on k1, k2, and k3. And critically, it will have sums of these terms and products of these terms. And it will be a mess. Similarly, P1 and P0. P0, for example, is going to be the determinant of A minus BK. And you can see immediately that that gives you quite a nasty dependence on the parameters K1, K2, and K3. So what's the solution? Solving for K1, K2, and K3 in order to set the desired pole positions does not seem to be trivial because we're getting some very complicated expressions and the link between the closed loop poles and the parameters we can choose is not transparent at all. So we need some better design tools, which is what will come in the following videos. So a summary, we've introduced the concepts of state feedback. We've shown it's easy to postulate a feedback mechanism where the input depends upon state measurements. So there it is, just write u equals minus kx. And it's easy to show that such a feedback changes the pole positions. However, it's much less clear whether a brute force computation is an effective mechanism for choosing the parameters of k to achieve the desired poles.